what I want to talk to you about is we're talking here and you're using the design learning process and aspects of it and you're doing it willfully to cause students to learn well. That's the intent and to have skills that transfer and so forth afterward and all that goes in it. Well, there's a body of literature that John Hattie has just finished. Maybe you've seen his work, Vis Visible Learning. And if you go through that, he looked at just about every bit of research there was on education and learning. 800 plus meta-analyses, 50,000 studies, 200 million students, and at the end of the day, 138 different strategies that are common in across schools and learning and settings. And it seems to me we ought to be aware of not just what keeps coming our way. Oh, this is good stuff. Everyone will sell you this. This is research-based. Is anybody using anything that is not research-based anymore? Nobody's selling a product that is not research-based. And they all have a study that says, and it's the best thing you'll ever do. And we've been there how many times to date and not seen the outcomes or the effects. And most of the time, those studies are presented to us in education as percent differences. And they don't go all the way back to the primary studies and look at the original research and the effect size and the design of the study and so forth. So just a very quick, if we get out of the other statistics and go to effect size, we're looking at standard deviations, the bell curve, how much of a deviation from normal or typical or average or expected is this. One standard deviation is huge. It's, it's just wow if anything gets close to a one. So one is a big number. We're usually looking at 0.2 or 0.24 or things like that. So I want to differentiate along this line what are the highest impact strategies known to produce learning outcomes? and are they embedded not only in design but other things we do. So is something research-based if it has a negative effect size? Sure, they researched it, it just had a negative effect. There are things in our schools that have negative effects, aren't there? And we know what some of those are. Is it research-based if it's plus 2-1? 0.21 rather. Yes, so research-based doesn't tell us enough. It tells us somebody did a study or two or three, but it doesn't really tell us whether it matters to what we're doing or whether it's the best thing for us to do. So Hattie did a really nice way of organizing this information visually, puts it in the bell curve, and lo and behold, here's zero way over here. In other words, most people find what they look for. If they study something, it's because they want to have a finding and they get a finding. The issue is, okay, they got a finding, so it's research-based, so of course we have to have it. Not so fast. There are some actual negative effects. Good to know what actually goes the opposite way. Then there's a whole body of things that are 0.40 or less. In other words, they all have a positive effect, but it's less than typical. It's not the more powerful effect sizes, it's the lesser effect sizes.
design learning I think is intriguing and attractive in the in the respect that it's kind of the intersection between art and science. It really pulls together the the really kind of loosey goosey creativity that you see in the in the visual artist, but then the the scientific pursuits that you see in the engineer and the mathematician.